running. Yes, there he is. Blood, gore, intense violence. I just want to make sure my audio is okay. Hey everyone! Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another tabletop adventure here at Digital Woods. Uh, we are continuing our mess around with open war stuff. Yep. Uh, since Mike was the small team last game, I'll be playing small team this game, and I'll be running Tau Empire. And I'll be running Necrons. So this could be a little interesting. It could. Once again, with open war stuff, uh, we're gonna have to see what it comes out to. Mike has a thousand point list. I'm running a 500 point list. So, yeah. We'll see. Yes. On to army intros? Yes, on to army intros. Alright, folks, here's going to be my 500 point patrol detachment of Broken Step. Once again, still not sure if that's the correct pronunciation. Starting off with my warlord for this army, he is a commander in an enforcer battlesuit. Uh, he will have the Warlord trait through Unity Devastation. Uh, and his for his weapons, he's got an Airburst Projector Launcher, two Burst Cannons, and he has the um, Shield Generator Sub or Support System. He also upgraded his Airburst Projector to the Supernova Launcher to the Relic System. Moving on to the troop choice, I've got a 10-man unit of strike team uh, with just their standard pulse rifles in the unit, but they will be escorted by two marker light drones. Moving on to a, an elite choice, I have a 3-man unit of crisis battle suits. Uh, they have a variety of weapons uh, across the three models. They have two burst cannons in the unit and four pulse, I'm sorry, four plasma rifles in the unit. And all three of them will be having shield generators on them for that extra survivability. For my final unit, I have a five man unit of pathfinders. There are three ion rifles in the unit. Uh, and then the other two have their pulse carbines with marker lights. They are escorted by two marker drones and a pulse accelerator drone and that is my 500 points on the nose of broken step tau all right so here is going to be my nearly thousand points of necron i'm going to be bringing the sarotech uh, dynasty uh, and with that i might as well start on the warlord of this group which is going to be a catacomb command barge with a Goss Cannon, and I'm changing out the Staff of Light for an Abyssal Staff, uh, and his Warlord trait is going to be Hyperlogical Strategist. Next, I'm going to be bringing a Cryptic with his standard Staff of Light. Uh, next, in the Infantries, is going to be two groups of five Immortals, all with Goss Blasters. Uh, next, I'm going to be bringing a group of five Lich Guard, all with War Scythes. Uh, and the last three in my army are going to be a Catan Shard of the Deceiver, a Knight Scythe, and just to fill out points, three Canoptic Scarabs. Uh, and that's my army. Okay, and rolling off to see what we get, starting with deployment. Yep. One. Roll it again. Three. three. Modified spearhead. We had that one already. It's huh. kind of weird. Let's just roll it. Roll it. Yeah, try, try and get a new one. Four and two. Okay. Modified dawn of war, which I have a feeling that means we're going to be long ways meeting in the middle. And will it be completely like half and half again? Divide the table in half. Yes. All right. So, yeah. uh, you, you'd better hope you don't get the victory condition of uh, hold, hold one side hold of the, the board. board. Yeah, because it's, it's worse than yours. It really is. Because <laughs> 24, 24, <laughs> hey, you can't let them on this 24. <laughs> oh boy, all right, yep. well there's that. Objective. Objective, and two and six. Kill the courier. At the start of the first battle round, before determining who has first turn, each player lets the other opponent know which model in their army is their courier. 
the model cannot uh, the model cannot be the army's warlord and must already be set up on the battlefield. The first player to slay the other opponent's courier wins the battle. You see, now I wish I brought that. Yeah. That way I'd, I'd have to make you interact with it. Yeah, because right, it's, it's not restricted to, like, must be, like, an infiltry or anything nope. like that. Nope. All right. And twist. The twist. What a twist. Six and two. Battle Frenzy. Sounds like a melee related thing. Add one to all attack characteristics of all models in this battle. <laughs> Good. Two armies that aren't melee ish get plus one attack. Yeah. You do have a melee group. Yes. Alright, and uh, I guess I'll leave you to uh, the, uh, do your secrecy bits. Yep. The ruse and sun death. Alright, and let us roll for the ruse. That one. Dug in. Activate this ruse after deployment is complete, but before the first battle round, any of your units that are not in cover count as being in cover as long as they remain stationary. Cool. That's not going to be super useful, but hey. Alright, sudden death. One. Vendetta. Activate the sudden death if your warlord destroys the enemy warlord. You immediately win. Cool. If an, yeah, if an attack. Okay. Cool. So my warlord has to kill his warlord. Okay, and here's everything deployed for this open war game. Necron's getting all most of the way up in their deployment zone. And how I hung back as far as I pretty much could. Uh, at the end of the, this, we have to choose who our couriers are. Um, for the sake of mine, mine's going to be the sergeant of the battlesuit squad. And for the sake of mine, I'm going to be making it my uh, deceiver. Fair enough. So you have to wipe out this group of battle suits, and I have to kill the deceiver. Yes. All right. Uh, now we roll to see who goes first. I obviously finished deploying first. So you get that plus one. I got you. Okay. So uh, do you want do you want to go first? Yes. Okay. I will attempt to seize. Holy crap! You get to go first. It's a miracle. All right. Uh, and before your first round start movement phase, my ruse activates. All my units kind of be in cover. Oh, okay. Cool. Plus ones. Yeah. Super. Nah. It's it. it they they kind of be in cover as long as if they don't move. All right. I was wondering why you had the one group just out and about. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, on to first turn. Or the Necrons. All right, so Necron turn one. I guess first off, biggest thing in the room. Uh, it just moved its 20 inches over to here, getting ready to fire off into this group, mainly these three. Um, everyone moved up. The only ones that advanced were the Lich Guard, as they don't have any kind of shooting attack. The I would have advanced him, but I'd rather he be behind this nice meat shield. Well... Metal shield, but either way. Uh, and then, yeah, basically everyone else just moved up into rapid fire range, which is good. Um, and then I guess on to shooting, which uh, reminds me, I forgot to say it during my intro for character for my army, but uh, his two. Catan Shard powers are going to be Transdimensional Thunderbolt and Antimatter Meteor. Uh, so, on to shooting. I need some dice. Alright, so start of the shooting phase. I will start with the uh, Night Scythe here. It's going to just shoot everything over into uh, this group of three. I uh, forget, what are they called again? Uh, crisis Battle Suits. Crisis Battle Suits. Alright, so... Eight shots hitting on threes. And that is going to be... It's like four misses, yeah. but you got two sixes. So you just get all those back. Sweet. Because of Tesla. Yep. And then wounding on... Threes. Threes also. So just two miss. 
So six possible wounds. Mm -hmm. And with all your benefits, I think you've got a two up. Yes, I in fact have a two up save. Huzzah! Two up save. Let your make all. Well done. All right, so on to my Catacomb Command Barge way over here. He's going to start off shooting with his Gauss Cannon, which is a heavy D3, but since I'm Sourtech, I don't get the negative of moving with heavy. Mm, something else Sourtech gets. Yes, which is real good. Um, so three shots hitting on twos. All hit. Anything special for sixes? No, nothing special. And wounding on, it is strength. It is strength six. So it'll be wounding on threes. All right. And wounding on threes as well. For two possible wounds. AP? Uh, the AP is minus three. So four up uh, involves from their shields, which I made both. Oh, well done. All right, then he's going to be using his Abyssal Staff, which uh, has a bunch of special stuff that happens. He's going to be targeting this unit here. It auto hits, but... Um, Does it, what's its range? Is it like 1824? It should be like 1824. It should be 18. It's basically a Staff of Light. Okay. Actually, let's measure that real quick. All right, so there's a little... Uh, a little far away to aim at them, so I'm actually going to have my Abyssal Staff hit this group of Fire Warriors slash Strike Team. Okay. Um, so it's an auto hit, and I basically just roll a 3d6 three, or three D six if I get or am above their leadership score or their highest leadership score. Um, they take D3 wounds. So, woo! -hoo. Well, that's a 10. That so is, in fact, a 10. That would match anyone's leadership or be higher. All right, so that's just a D3 from the unit. Yep. You know. Well, that's gone. Three. Three. All right, so next on to the Immortals with their ten shots. Hitting on threes. Um, so three misses? Yep, three misses from that. And should be wounding on... Threes, you're not yep. strength six. All right, so threes. With four three. more gone, so three total possible wounds. Mm -hmm. Did I say what I was shooting? No. You might have, but I don't know. You were, you were firing at these guys. Okay, yeah. That, I knew what you were shooting at. So, it's going to be three six-ups, because you have AP minus two on those guys. Made one, so two more are going to go down. Cool. Um... Next, I'm going to see if I'm actually still within range to do any of the uh, Chart of the Catan powers, and I think I'll finish up with the um, Crypt deck. All right, so it turns out I was mistaken on uh, when to actually use the uh, Chart of the Catan's uh, powers. That was supposed to be at the end of the movement phase. Whoops. So, uh can't do that and the crypt deck is actually out of range now for anything so that is the end of my shooting i am too far away to make any charges right now so i'm going to be ending my turn fair enough uh, so on to your turn one at the end of uh, mike's turn i have to do morale right here uh their leadership seven so they're down to two however if i get a six uh it also counts as being Courageous. So a one or a six, I'm fine. Or a two. A three. So I lose one more guy. Oh. All right. At the end of the turn one movement for the Tau, jump these suits over, moved my fire warriors over. Move the Pulse Accelerator drone up, and everything else stayed put. And... Oh yeah, and I brought in my uh, commander just in my deployment zone, right there. Basically, if he dies, I can shoot at uh, 
Mike's carrier with my commander. All right, with that being said, it is time to go on to shooting phase. So I'll be starting off with these two marker drones, which did not move, firing into the Lich Guard. Two shots hitting, whoop, two shots hitting on fives. One hit, so they are now markered. Anything shooting at them gets to reroll ones. And then these two are going to do the same thing down, but now they get to reroll once. Another one, up to two on it. All right, next in line is going to be the Pathfinder team, firing one marker light and three ion cannons, or ion rifles down. All right. And I am going to supercharge those ion rifles, but I'll start off with the marker light, which is hitting on a four from the Pathfinder. Hit. So there's now three on it. So you don't get any sort of cover at this point. I wouldn't have anyway. But just in case. I am missing those dispersion shields right now, right about now, though. So that is now going to move on to the ion rifles. That is heavy D3 from each. So that is going to be five shots. I am going to spend a command point to reroll one of them for a total of seven shots. Well done. All right, seven shots hitting on fours, rerolling ones. So, looks like only three hits. Uh, strength eight, so I'm looking for threes to wound. Three wounds. Uh, AP is actually only minus one, so. Three four ups for that then, which I make two. Yeah, and that's just gonna be a dead dude. Yeah, they do two damage a pop. Ah, all right, got it. I'm gonna pull from over on this side. Next up is going to be the Fire Warriors firing their eight shots in. Eight shots coming from them, hitting on fours. Ugh. So two hits, three direct misses, and three rerolling ones because of marker lights. So four hits. I am strength five on the standard gun, so uh, wounding on fours. Four, two. No AP on the standard fire warrior gun, so two. Two three ups. Oh, down goes another one. All right, next I'm gonna jump over to my commander. I realized I didn't say this earlier, but it wouldn't have mattered until now. He's going to do his three unity devastation, and he's going to put it on the Lich Guard. It only affects people within six inches of him gets this bonus, but so he gets it. All right. Anytime I roll a uh, to wound roll of a six, it AP it goes up by one. So starting off with his two burst cannons, it's a total of eight shots, hitting on twos. We're rolling ones because of marker lights. We're rolling ones because of marker light. That is going to be all hits. This is strength five versus your tough of five, so wounding on fours. And looks like four straight misses, two regular saves, and two with an AP of minus one. All right, so the two regulars, two three ups, made one, and then the two four ups. So that's one more dead. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is his Supernova Cannon. Ooh. That is a D6 number of shots for two. These are going to be hitting on twos. Both hit. Strength six, so I'm looking for threes to wound. Both wound. One is EP minus three. The other one is EP minus two. So one five up. Oop, one over there. And one six up. Nope. No. And they do two damage a pop. So that That's two off. separate attacks, so that is yep. two dead. Damn it. There goes your shield. There and goes my, my shield. My courier squad can finish off the target. Yep. Just double checking. Yep, does two damage to pop BP minus two. There you go. Should have made him a courier. Thought it'd be cheap though. Alright, so this unit is now going to go ahead and fire, starting off with the burst cannon, the two burst cannons from the unit. A total of eight shots, hitting on fours, we're rolling ones. We're rolling the two ones and two straight misses. Nope. So four hits. You're a tough seven, so I'm wounding on fives. For three wounds. Alright. No AP on the burst cannon. Alright, so that's gonna be three four-ups for my Katan uh, shard. 
and I make all three of those four ups. All right. Next up is going to be the four pulse, I'm sorry, plasma rifles from the unit firing in. Uh, they are in rapid fire range, which is uh, 15 at the moment because I'm broken step. So eight shots hitting on fours, rerolling ones. Yuck. Two hits, five misses, one reroll. Two hits. Their strength six, so I'm wounding on fives. No wounds. Any other guns from that group? Nope, that's it. That's all of my guns. Alrighty then. That was my chance to win. <laughs> Alright, so Necron movement, I had uh, this group disembark and then just kind of stay within the three inches. They don't need to get any really closer. They can shoot just well enough from here. Um, I had this group move up its five. Uh, he shifted over to kind of be with this group, moved on up, flew over here uh, to provide maybe some better shots than last time into here. Moved up, ready to charge, and because I keep forgetting to show them, uh, are playing Ring Around the Rosie over here, just in case. Uh, so that is my movement at the end of movement. This time I'll remember it. I'll, and I also forgot to say I gave a wave of command to uh, those groups there. That group of uh, immortals, sorry. I think it's wave of command for the uh, yeah, catacomb command bar. wave of command. Sweet. So, um, Powers of the Catan. He's going to be using Antimatter Meteor on the closest unit, which is this one. So for that, I'm going to be rolling a, I believe a D6 on a 2-up, the closest visible enemy unit within 24 inches. Those guys. Um, take D3 Mortal Wounds. However, if I get a 6-up, they suffer D6. So, let's find out. Ah, it's a 5, so... Just the D3 mortal wounds. I don't know what that is. One. They suffer one mortal wound. I will spend a command point to re-roll that. Okay. Two. No, sorry. Five. Three. Yeah, five is a three. Three mortal wounds. Right, well. Goodbye, burst guy. And uh, then I'm going to be using a... Stratagem, uh, Wrath of the Catan for the rest of my two points. Okay. Which basically allows me to uh, use the stratagem after a Catan shard from your army has resolved a power of the Catan. Roll a d6 to randomly select a power from the Catan from the page. Uh, and I immediately cast that power as if, uh, uh, even if it has already used a power this phase. Okay. So find out which power I use. Two, whatever is two. Two is time arrow. So that is, pick a visible enemy unit within 18 inches of the Catan Shard. Roll a d6, adding one to the result. If the Catan Shard using this power is a Tesseract, no, it's not. Um, if I exceed the highest wound characteristics of the unit, one model from that unit chosen by the controlling player is slain. So. What is the highest wound characteristic? Three. Okay. Because so. he just did three mortal wounds that killed the guy. Fair enough. So three up, I guess. Well, it would have been four because he had to exceed it. But True. Still four up. It. I still got it. So it's one down. I'm out of command points, but it is now on to the shooting phase. I'll start over here with him. Uh, that auto hits. Well, is he within 12? Probably this distance. Actually, just no, not. Just out. You should have. I, sh I should have shifted him a little bit. All right, well. All right, he's just going to be using his um, Gauss cannon. So three shots hitting on twos. Yes, hitting on twos because. Do you nor have any moving. Yep. So two hits and. Wounding on threes. threes. You said it was strength six. Yep, so one possible wound. Maybe? 
Uh, AP should be minus three. Okay, three, so it's a four up in vault. Okay. He's Made okay it. still. Alright, and uh, then he's going to use the uh, Abyssal Staff on uh, this group here. Okay. Technically, you should have declared that before you fired, but yes. Okay. Well, he was out of range. Yeah. And you're entirely correct. Mm -hmm. Um. So, Abyssal Staff. Explained eight. it earlier. Eight. So, D3 Mortal Wounds to that unit. Two. Two. Two more guys. Uh, next, I'm going to have the... Uh, Night Scythe, fire at the the mech suit. Crisis battle suit. Technically the sergeant from that unit, so it's raw, something like that. Good zone type. So eight shots hitting on threes. Um, missed twice. And wounding on threes as well. So three possible wounds. No IP, so I have a three up save. Well, oh, should I fail two? Right, so you just got I'm going one to, wound. I'm going to spend a command point, obviously. Okay. So, yeah. I take one. Alright, the Cryptek firing in next at this good dude right there. It's going to be three shots hitting on threes. All hit and wounding on fours. Ah, one miss. Two hits. So wounded twice, so two four up saves. Which made one fail one. Yeah, so he's got one wound left. Alright, so next I'm going to have my immortals shoot in to him. I've got one that can't see at all, one that's in rapid fire, and then three that aren't. So it's going to be five shots going in. Uh, hitting on threes. Twos. No, sorry, twos. I gave wave of command. So all but one, and wounding on still threes, I believe. Fours. Fours. Strength five with those golfs, whatever. You are correct. So, one. Wasn't that a four and a six? That was a four and a six, sorry. <laughs> the two, I have a four up save still. Which failed, I've got no more points, so, and that's the end of the game. Yep. Well, I have one more command point, but I can't re-roll the save. You can't re-roll the save, yeah. All right, well, that was somewhat stacked against you. Oh, God, that was epically stacked against me. Ugh. And, yeah. I'm curious, what was your win condition? Uh, my warlord killed your warlord. Ah. All right. Which I didn't get to a second turn, so I couldn't have deep strike behind you to attack your warlord. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, um, double the amount of points is obviously an advantage. The fact that you started in rapid fire range is a huge advantage against Tau. Yep. You had first turn, another advantage. Um, your thing was literally just kill these three dudes. I had to kill a character, so you could have turtled him the entire game. Yep. Uh, you yep. had mortal wound, mortal wound, mortal wounds. Yeah, I, I, I didn't stand a chance this game. It makes me sad that this is apparently the only way I can win against you. <laughs> yeah, and, and my ruse was, you get cover save. You can't bring a unit back. You know, I, I'm real glad I got that one when I... I you can't redeploy was... your units. You can't, like, put like, up lines. You can't cover. cause... Yeah. Yay. On the fact that... All of your guys have AP minus one or two for most of their guns. Yeah. Barring the Tesla, but Tesla's got its own stuff. Yep. Uh, so it, it's definitely an interesting game mode in the sense that it can go one way or it can go a completely other direction. And I had a, a slim chance of winning if I was managed to kill that on my first turn. Oh, because there was no way I'd be able to take out the um, his overlord in the first turn with my dude. But it was all right. Well, well, good game. Yeah. Uh, hope you all enjoyed, everyone. Uh, if you did, let us know. Uh, and have a good one.